Good morning all. Right. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, democracy, the rule of law, equal rights, regardless of race, sex or sexuality. David Cameron says this is what defines us as a society. To belong here is to believe these things. So, what happens when those values clash? Should we tolerate the intolerant? He's basically trying to root out bigotry here, Peter Hitchens. We've got plenty of homegrown bigots, though, haven't we? Well, we have plenty of homegrown bigots, but I, I, I just take exception to a number of things that he says. The idea of muscular liberalism, for instance, it's, it's like rigid jelly or an angry, an angry whelk. It, 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 it's just something that doesn't happen. Liberalism is by its nature not muscular. And the other thing is he seems to define Britishness as a form of political correctness. You, 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 can't, you can't live here un, unless you sign up to equality and diversity, rather than you can't live here unless you accept that the Christian religion is, 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 our, is our prime source of morality and law, but on the basics, seem to me to be a much better uh, basis. On the basics, we can sign up to like equality by race, equality by sexuality, equality by gender, a belief in democracy, or should we tolerate those who don't believe any, any well, of those Toleration things? and equality are two different things. Toleration, apart from anything else, implies disapproval. I tolerate you. I don't mm. like what you do. I tolerate you because I'm a civilised person who's prepared to share my society with you, even mm. though I don't like you. So it's, it's not the same thing. I can't know. One man's uh, intolerance is another's deeply held belief. We know that from this program. Absolutely, but <laughs> I think the very possibility of being liberal, the very possibility of holding any belief, has to be the, the, the thing that grounds it. And that means that there's certain forms of belief which destroy that, which we cannot tolerate. Like? Well, uh, fascism, uh, all, all manner of sort of reductive philosophy. What is called Islamism, for example? Well, certain elements, certain strains of certain interpretations, yeah, absolutely. When you say so not tolerate, when you say not tolerate, do you mean make illegal? Prevent well, them from speaking, ban, ban their organisations? Yes, absolutely. You, so you, 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 but you I would say the same about Christians. Say, say the same about the Christians. I would say the same about... I think if you... But freedom of speech, where does that come in? But, but you have to... If the thing that you're saying is actually undermining the form of... the notion of speech itself, you know, if you're... If you're saying, for example, say you're a fascist and you go, well, Jews aren't, aren't really people, right? You're undermining an entire group of people and reducing <coughs> them to the inhuman. It's, it, it's, it's sort of, it's self-refuting. Well, Baroness well, Asher, let me put something else, if I may, that David, David Cameron <laughs> said, which is really interesting in this speech. And he's not the first leading politician to express these sentiments. I mean, he's gone further with this phrase, muscular and, uh, and aggressive, but it could have been a speech by Tony Blair or David Blunkett or John Reid. It's been endorsed by David Blunkett, for example. Uh, and he said, um, when a white person holds objectionable views, racism, for example, we rightly condemn them. But when equally unacceptable views or practices have come from someone who isn't white, we've been too cautious, frankly, even fearful to stand up to them. Do you think there is any validity in that? I think that, that I, this is an argument that I did have with David Blunkett when he started talking about commu community cohesion. Mm. I think, of course, we have to counter injustice wherever we see it. Mm -hmm. What worries me is the assumption that it's only Muslims who have practices that go against you. It's only... <laughs> Maybe it's come in all shapes and sizes and well, creeds exactly. and credos. And this is the thing, To yeah. define a whole people by their faith, mm -hmm. the idea that, you know, as an Iranian, I can't celebrate Nowruz, mm. which dates back 2,500 years, just because I'm a Muslim, is absolutely crazy. Just as is the idea that because I'm a Muslim, I'm an extremist. We need to get out of these labels. Uh, sorry, can I just add to that? And indeed, one of the major fundamentalisms at work in British culture today is atheist fundamentalism, <laughs> not simply <laughs> religious fundamentalism. Yeah. Yeah. Because atheist fundamentalism is even more dangerous to some degree because it actually denies the existence of a person. Well, you're going to make that illegal, or what? I mean, what are you doing? I don't want to make yeah, it yeah. illegal. Well, let's speak, I mean, let's, let's, let, let's speak to um, uh, Abu Raya, who's here, from Muslims Against Crusades, formerly Islam for UK, which was banned. That's not correct, no. No, you, you, what's not correct? 
that will form leave Islam for UK. Were you ever in that? No. Okay. Were, were you our, in our organisation is called Muslim. Al Were you in Al Our organisation is called Muslims Against Crusades. All right. Well, uh, Islam for UK and Al Muhajirun were both banned. So, so you know, as a government yeah, would have it, okay. so bad they banned them twice, frankly. And where, did the freedom, where did the freedom go there? Yeah. Where did the freedom exactly. go? Exactly. So question. it's but oxymoron here. Where's you're your about freedom, freedom to burn poppies? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Islamically, it's allowed for me to burn poppies or for any number. Of the highlight of the issue is the more bigger thing. Uh, we understand that the war against Islam and Muslims, David Cameron is the two-headed snake in charge of the crusade against Islam and Muslims mm. in Iraq and Afghanistan. Islam does not allow uh, you to disrespect let, other let people. Finish. Absolutely not. Well, can I just say, also, I think, he also a, disagrees with uh, Abu, there, there, is a, there, is a, there is a rider here. There is a rider. No, most Muslims in this th country think you are an utter embarrassment. Why, but, why is but, that? But, uh, because well, we call for the Sharia. Yes. We call for a better way of life, a superior way of life. Mm -hmm. than the the Kogmaya we face here today. We have recession. We have colleagues of David Cameron stealing all the money, money. they have gardeners on, on Look, second plane. You can have your own way of life. We have, we have a superior way of life. Wait a minute, Baroness Asha, are, the, the, this is what this speech is all about. Are, are let, other let Muslims say. doing enough to condemn people like of him? Of course they are, of course. I mean, this is the problem, that we do have our own debate. And I am perfectly willing to have a debate with you on Quranic base. I teach Islamic law, so I know well, what I I'm should, talking I should, about. I should, I should think that we should debate with people on our level. This is someone obviously clearly not practicing Islam. She says she's a Muslim, but she's obviously uh, very... Uh, I'm oxymoron. sorry, you are not... She's not covered or anything like that. Excuse the basic me. fundamentals of Islam... Islam is not but a anyway, performance. Going back to the, going back to the well, you don't believe in democracy, right? Oh, clearly not, I'm a Muslim. Right, Excuse right. Okay, right. Well, no, I, it's like Excuse me. Right, right, look, Varas, if I may, Connor, you, you, at the beginning you said we have to be wary of people who have views like this, stoning women, stoning homosexual, stunning adulteresses. What should we do about people like our friend here? I think we should give them free, free uh, sponsorship to go to university and study theology. I think we should listen to them Peter very Richards. carefully. I think we should listen to them very carefully. We need to know this is what they think. Yeah. If we suppress them, if we say you're banned, yeah. we won't find out. But they're if right we, if, on the fringe. But well, they are what, they, this is then, what, then they will remain on the fringe if we find out what it is that they think. Islam is an enormously powerful political project, you, which would change this country irrevocably if it you would, became. You would think. If it became. You would think. Let me say something. Hang on a second. Let Peter finish. finish. You would think we're on the fringe. We're not on the fringe. It's an enormously powerful political project, which would change this country irrevocably if it became the majority religion. You will keep interrupting you Muslims. Of course they are. <laughs> Islam is a, is a proselytizing religion which believes the whole world should be Muslim. And they would like this country to be Muslim. If we want to find out, if you want to find out, if you want to find out, you want to find out, you want to find out what they think, let them speak, and then you right. can discover let you want to like. I will let you speak, and I will come back to you in one second. That, that but point, I think it's an, on that, that point. Don't worry. We're not on the fringe. Hold, hold the, that thought. The fastest you going, believe you have the truth. religion in this country. You Even your show said that English women who are embracing Islam in their hundreds. So therefoise you can't say we're on the fringe. Right. Mohammed from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee. What about this accusation that extremist views and most people think that uh, Abu's views are right on the edge, right, really extreme, and many people, Muslims, find what he is saying utterly offensive. What about this accusation that Muslim communities are not doing enough to condemn people like him? Yeah, agree is there, with us. Well, to be honest, agree, well, he yeah. says that because they agree with him. No, Muslim yeah, communities not doing enough. Absolutely not true. Um, to be honest, uh, a classic case in point is uh, some time ago in Luton, when Al Mahajirun were visiting uh, Luton, a city, um, all the Muslims came out onto the streets to tell them that they, they were not welcome on our streets. They don't represent the Muslim view. They don't represent the Muslim view. That's right. right. And David Cameron seems to think that's 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 not <coughs> articulated enough. I mean, David Cameron is another story altogether. Uh, I would, I would I mean, I would accuse David Cameron in his own words of passive tolerance. Uh, you know, his speech came on a day when the EDL, you know, an extreme... English Defence League. Yeah, yeah. an extreme far-right uh, threat that is threatening and it poses a, a great danger to everybody in this country. You know, they, they're speaking... Oh, are they not a, a fringe as well? I mean, who poses the greatest... They certainly are, but... Well, who they... poses the greatest danger? Our, uh, our friend here, Abu, or the EDL, for example, or are they equal? See, freedom of speech is, uh, you know, a, a detailed thing. You've, you've got to look at the, the, the full thing in detail. I mean, you've got one, one case where you can hear a person's views. It is another thing to go out, let them to go out onto the streets and cause criminal damage to actually, in, you know, incite racial hatred, mm. religious mm. hatred, and fear. 
So, uh, Alex Brunner, what do you think? We have to... I mean, if we didn't tolerate... If we stopped tolerating the intolerant, we'd lose half our guests on this <laughs> programme. <laughs> this the, I think you're absolutely right. I think a great <laughs> characteristic of British society down the, down the centuries has it's been its willingness to accept people for what they are. And so that tolerance is incredibly important. But uh, um, our friend here says that, that, that at the fringe, or at, he's not at the extreme, he's not at the fringe. But the... What I worry about, this is an intelligent man, we can tell from the way he articulates what he thinks. However, what I worry about is there are much less intelligent Islamic followers, Muslims in this country, who listen to what he says and are led down a, a path of extremism which could cause tremendous trouble. And indeed, uh, the, victims, the victims of the 77 bombers, the victims of 9-11, they're the people I fear for, the families of those people who've been killed because of that extreme view. And members of these groups have, have expressed and I, and support the, for those yeah, terrorists, uh, yeah. And the idea that the British government should be supporting or providing finance to groups, well, Muslim, Islamic groups, which filter down into some of this extreme area is absolutely worrying. I think David Cameron was absolutely right. Muslim. Where did the freedom of speech go there? No. Well, give, her, give, her, her, give the Brunners a little bit of freedom Let of speech. Just, who gives you the right to tell me whether I am a good Muslim or not? Because of your eyes. You have no right to do that. You have no Quranic right to do that. It's quite cl clear by the teaching of the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we judge from their parent and the fundamentals of Islam you need to stick by. God you, does you can not judge rather, by appearances. You, 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 Come on. I'm sorry to say you you're know, not the you main issue. The main issue is you that the who that's going to be. About why we're sort of focusing on, say, Islam, for example, yeah. in Because David Cameron did yesterday. Yeah. But say, why, isn't, why is David Cameron also not looking at the extremists in Catholicism David and David Cameron, Judaism? that he talks about this, this, this list of values, the, the, the British values, equality by race, sexuality and gender, a belief in democracy, things which signally, and Anthony points it out, there are many sections of society don't, don't buy into. He says, Including to belong you. here is to believe in this. Well, it always, it always, now, some it people always, read some it, of your columns. It always say, used to make me laugh when, when George W. Bush would say about the Muslims, they hate our way of life. And I said, yeah, I hate our way of life, too. <laughs> uh, and in, 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 many, in, in many ways, it, my, my views on something co coincide quite closely with yours. And you I, should, disapprove, you I disapprove of a lot of the things which you won't tolerate. I disapprove, but I tolerate. I think that in a free society, which people party, should be which permitted party, which to do these decide? things. I will argue against them doing them, and I will argue very strongly for a society in which these things are discouraged, but I will not say I will not tolerate them. That's a distinction between me and you. I would, if, and by, 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 by tolerating you, which I, which, I, which I think I should do, one of the things I do is I allow you to say quite openly just how intolerant you are and what a menace your ideas would be to our society <laughs> if they became further. But there is something, there is a very good, a very good example. You challenge something which the Baroness said, which went unchallenged. Doesn't okay, it? yes. Use of the word Islamophobia. Yes. As if those of us who look at Islam and say we don't actually want this country to be an Islamic country and be governed by Islamic rules are, are in some cases, are in some way governed by a, an irrational fear. On the contrary, or a prejudice, on the contrary, it's a post-judice. We've looked at Islam, we don't like its precepts, we don't want them here because we prefer... We don't saying want here is we do not want the precepts of Islam here because we do not want to live in an Islamic but society. I mean, anyway, that is a rational... Like it, that is a rational position. It is not a phobia and can't be classified as some kind of mental illness. It is a perfectly reasonable position to take. And people who want to take part in a civilized discussion should not classify the opinions of their opponents as phobias, they should take them on with reason, fact and logic, especially academics and professors. We protect our women. It's, it's, it's okay for you to kill, bomb, gas, or rape even children and women and so on. So that's why the school, even in this country, uh, when the war was taking place, the schools were closed. So I don't know what your argument is. But going back to the argument about David Cameron, there is a clash between civilization, be between truth and falsehood. So therefore, the, uh, it's at loggerheads, and David Cameron, Obama are in the head of the, one of them, and on the other side is uh, Sheikh Osama bin Laden. So therefore, the Muslims will all automatically follow Do the Muslims. I think there's a clash of civilizations. I'm Bradford born and bred. Uh, recently, when the EDL came to Bradford in August, the whole of Bradford, all sections of the community. We had several priests, we had several imams, we had uh, people of no faith, we had you know, people from all sex sectors coming together to try and figure out a way to deal with that issue and they dealt with it very successfully. Thank, Thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you all. We're going to leave that one. And you can join in that debate by logging on to bbc.co.uk.